on in this week's sequence, we saw that some of the manuscripts that contain the Muqatta miracle account were written in Kashuni, Arabic and Syriac script. The mere existence of these Kashuni versions put at a keen interest in this story within the Syrian Christian community. It could even indicate that this narrative circulated widely in Syria and Iraq. Whatever the case may be, it's interesting that we find an echo of the story even in the travel accounts by Marco Polo, the famous Italian traveller. He tells a very similar tale, but this time located in Iraq. In this version, a caliph challenges the Christians to prove the truth of the Bible verse that says that mountains can be moved by the power of their religion. The mountain has another name in this version, but the man who finally accomplishes the miracle is a one-eyed tenor. So, despite the different geographical settings, both stories are amazingly similar, aren't they? Back to Egypt. Other Western travelers recount the story of the Mokata mountain there, between the 14th and the 18th centuries. One of these is the Flemish traveler Jos van Gistel. All of these travelers met people who told them about the miracle while they visited the Hanging Church, one of the oldest Coptic churches in Egypt, as we mentioned earlier in the sequence. All of them link this story to a column located inside the church. They were told that the Virgin Mary appeared in front of this column, which was consequently venerated by the Copts. The column can still be seen today and is decorated by a very old painting of the Virgin Mary. One hypothesis to explain these important variations in the different versions is that they were texts that were read during religious ceremonies. These manuscripts contain the written versions of stories told orally during sermons inside the Coptic churches, like those that the travelers were told during their visits. Indeed, most of them, including the travelers' versions, mention the column. So, it seems that the miracle's memory was kept alive in the hanging church, where the Virgin is reported to have appeared to the Patriarch. Another place of memory that was already mentioned at the end of the 19th century can be found in a sanctuary located close to the Hanging Church. It is the so-called Caliph's Baptistery of Sultan's Baptistery and some Copts today say that the Caliph El Moiz was baptized there after the miracle. The impact of the story even on modern society becomes clear in a fierce debate that took place in the 1930s between a pro prominent Copt, Mokusi Meika Basha, the founder of the Coptic Museum, and several Muslim critics. Simeika mentioned the conversion of the Caliph in a book, but was accused of falsifying the national history of Egypt. He was finally compelled to write in the newspaper that he didn't personally believe the story was true. One critic particularly objected to the idea that the purported convert was none other than the Caliph al Moiz, the founder of Cairo, the greatest city in the Muslim world, who had also built the famous mosque and center of learning, Al Azhar, which is often regarded as the oldest university in the world. <laughs> as you can see, we are now in the 21st century, and what you have just seen is a Coptic gentleman who explains the story of the miracle to his Muslim friend. In doing so, he also tells the story of Father Saman, 
the priest who built the modern Mokattam site. And now that we know the story of the Mokattam miracle, we can have a look at how Father Saman managed to link it to his own autobiography. بيدعيني الصبح قابلني في الشارع بيدعيني ده كل مره مش هتيجي بقى لقيت صوت ربنا بيقول لي روح معاه انا اللي بدعي as he himself tells us before he was a priest god called upon him to preach among the zabalin the garbage collectors he discovered that the zabalin were a very poor community who lived in their harsh conditions first he hesitated and wondered what god wanted him to do in this area he prayed for three Sundays in a row on the top of the Mokata mountain to ask God to show him the way. On the third day, a storm brought him a piece of paper that happened to be a page of the Bible. It was a verse from the Acts of the Apostles, saying, Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent, for I am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. From this moment, he really felt that it was his mission to preach among the Zabalin. Indeed, as a preacher, he considered them to be great sinners, as we will see in the next video.